Hello and welcome to the second practicum in Python. In this practicum, we shall implement, we shall solve two exercises that I gave in the lecture. The first one is the test to test the Monte Carlo method to approximate certain known integrals. Okay, so the first integral is the integral from zero to one of x square, and the exact value is one third. We know that. So let us implement the Monte Carlo method that approximates this integral. Okay, so we start by importing the NumPy library, numerical Python library. <clears throat> and we take, for example, let us try several values of n. Okay, for example, let us start with n equal uh, 100. Okay, and then let us generate... 100 random numbers that are uniformly distributed in 0, 1. Okay, so we use the function numpy.random.uniform that we encountered earlier. And I hope that I convinced you earlier that the numpy is more efficient than the random library and more efficient than our homemade random number generator. Okay, it's much faster. And then we square actually the each number by means of the function numpy.square, okay? And then we take their mean, okay? So we don't need to do the sum and divide because there is a function in numpy called mean, the mean of a vector. So the sum divided by n, okay? And let us see what happens. Shift enter. So if we start with 100 number random numbers, we get this approximation, 0, 0, 0 0.3111. Okay, it's not very close to the exact value, which is 0 0.333. Okay, let us increase the number, 10 to the power 3. Now it's much better, the approximation is 0 0.32. 10 to the power 4. It's getting better, actually. 10 to the power 5. Okay, it's much better now. One million is much closer, actually. But you see that what you should notice is that the approximation is, is the convergence is slow, actually. And this is one of the weak points of Monte Carlo methods. Okay. Now, actually, we are not obliged to generate num random numbers between 0 and 1. We can generate actually random numbers between any two points. Okay, and the syntax is the following np.random.uniform. You specify a, the lower the lower interval, the lower value, minus 1, for example, between minus 1 and 2. Okay, and for example, what happens here if we generate four random numbers? Okay. So these are four random numbers generated uh, between minus one and two. Okay. If we start once again, if we start from the same seed, we get exactly the same results. Okay. This is something that would be useful if you want to test something. Okay. Now, if I don't start with the same seed, I get something different. Now I get two negative numbers. Okay. Yeah, this is what I said here. Okay, what about the second integral, which is the integral from zero to pi over two of sine x, and the exact value is one. If we do as in the lecture, we do the change of variables, y equal pi over two, uh, or x equal pi over two y, we get this integral. And this is what we want to approximate, actually. Okay, now of course you can approximate this directly by using the by generating random numbers between 0 and pi over 2, if you like. Same thing. Okay, but I wanted to illustrate this change of variables, uh, variables idea. Okay, so the second integral, of course, you can try different values of n. Let us start with 1 million. So, same thing, actually. We already encountered the syntax. If you want to compute a function uh, whose formula is known, we can use the lambda notation. Okay, so this is the function sine pi over 2x times pi over 2. And then, as before, we take the mean. Right? And 
with 1 million random number generate uh, random numbers we get a pretty good approximation actually the monte carlo approximation gives something a little bit larger 1.0002 and the exact value is 1 now if you run it another time ah we get something a little bit different 0 0.998885 why is so because we generated different random numbers this time so the mean changed a little bit but not much okay so this is another good test of the monte carlo approximation okay third integral so we do the change of variables so this is just arctangent x between zero and infinity so it's pi over two and if you do the change of variables y equal one over one plus x we get this integral between zero and one okay and now we implement the same thing okay so let me take here 10 to the power 6 as well, third integral. So I implement my function 1 over y squared plus 1 minus y squared. That, okay, with this, this simple formula. And then we take the mean, right? And p dot mean. And we get a good approximation, actually. The Monte Carlo approximation is 1.57088. Okay, so they coincide up to three decimal places so it's not a bad but note that we had to generate a big a large number one million random numbers okay so this concludes the first exercise uh, on testing the monte carlo method on known integrals okay the second exercise is to approximate pi by the monte carlo method okay but so we do it in two steps actually but let me first explain something if you have a vector okay for example here i took a vector of five numbers two vectors of five numbers and they are between zero and one the components are between zero and one now if we write a squared plus b squared less than one this is what actually this is a boolean vector okay let us test what happens actually here okay so what the, so what does it mean? It means that if you if you compare if you take the first two components 0, 05 and 0, 04, so 0, 05 squared plus 0, 04 squared is less than one, right? Because it's 0, 025 plus 0, 016, it's less than one, so it's true. Second, the second component 0, 09 squared plus 0, 09 squared is bigger than one, so it's false. Same thing for the third component, 0, 01. The 0, 1, and 1 is false, actually, right? Uh, and, sorry, excuse me. Uh, sorry, zero, yeah, so 0, 9, 0, 9, 0, point, 0, point 0.8 and 1, 0 and 0 is true, 0, 3 and 0, 2 is true, okay? So why is this important, actually? Because if you interpret the value true to be 1 and false to be 0, we can what, actually? We can count the number of components of coordinates which are true so when you do the summation actually so i i so true plus false plus false plus true plus true gives me what actually gives me three right so this is one way of counting the number uh, of points that satisfy a certain condition okay the condition of being inside the square the the circle okay so i'm going to use this idea now okay let us take for example n equal 1 million let us start with something smaller 100 okay we generate two and uh, two independent random vectors uniformly on zero one okay and we take we let m be the number of points of couples which fell inside the disk and when we multiply by four as we so this will give me an approximation of pi so when i run this i get a poor approximation actually i get 3.2 but i get if i take 10 to the uh, 1000 up uh, random uh, couples i get 3.14 which is a better and so on so you can test Okay, five, 
if you run it twice, actually you get something a little bit different because they are really they are random numbers. They are supposed to be random. Okay. If I take one million, I get something not so bad. So it's it coincides with pi to the first first three digits. Okay. So this is the Monte Carlo approximation of pi. Now I want to, to see how the error actually changes the size of n. So I repeat this procedure actually uh, for several values of n. Okay. So this procedure actually could be written as a function of n, of the input n. Okay. So we can define a, a function that called pi mc, pi Monte Carlo, that has an argument which is the number of random couples that you want to generate okay so given the number that i need to generate uh, we create two vectors of random numbers x and y and then I do, as we did here we count the number of couples or, or points that are inside the disk not all of them are in the disk and we multiply the result by 4, actually, divide by n. And this would be our approximation of pi, but depending on n. Okay. So, for example, if I take n equal 1,000, I get this rather poor result, actually. Okay. And now I want to try several values of n. Okay. As we said in this. So, start from 100, 1,000, etc., etc., 10 million. Let's see what happens. So we have to plot the error. So we do that with mathplotlib.pyplot. Okay, and we can also measure the time taken. Let us see. So we run this function pi mc with several, actually, so I took here from 1000 to uh 100,000 actually by steps of 1000 so 1000 1000 2000 3000 etc up to 100 okay so i repeat i run my function uh let us say uh, 100 times in this case okay what happens uh well it's pretty fast on my computer it's 0 0.27 seconds actually so it's quite big and now let me plot all these errors and get something like that. So the red line is the value of pi, it's, three point, it's the exact actually. When I start with, let us say, 1000, I get this error, it's a little bit above. Then, when in 2000, actually, I get something smaller, okay, and so on and so on. So at the, st the time steps are actually here one of 1,000, actually. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, etc., up to uh, 100,000. Okay, so you see, what do we observe here, actually? We observe an oscillation that seems to be stochastic of the error. So the error is in blue, actually. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's slower. And this is a feature of stochastic simulations, actually. Okay? And, but we see that uh, on average, uh, the error decreases. Okay, It's not strictly decreasing because it's sometimes up, sometimes down, but the trend is to decrease, actually. And you can try something different, actually, instead. So, for example, uh, we can start with 10,000 by a step of 10,000, and we go to 1 million. Let's see what happens. Now it could take more time, actually, <clears throat> because the vectors generated are large now. So it took, on my computer, 6.7, okay? And now if I do the plot, I get something very similar, actually, but a little bit, not the same numbers, of course, okay? So now the error is much smaller than before, if you want to compare with before. So let us compare with the two. So three five let us say you can of course uh, experiment with different numbers so let us see for example here so also the time is random 
Okay, so let us see. The biggest, so it's around, so the difference is the maximum value is, is about 3.2, let us say. Okay, this is the biggest error here. And then it gets smaller and smaller. If you do the same thing now with higher, with more numbers, actually, so the vectors so should be more precise now. And the power six. Yeah, it will take some time. So notice the difference now. The error will be much smaller now. It will take some time. 10 seconds or... Yeah, these things happen. We should get something smaller now. Oh, it took a lot. Oh, yeah. So let us. Okay. So now you see the error is, is smaller, actually. We, we had something about 3.2 as a maximum. Now we had an error of. So the, 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 the value, the approximation is now about 3.16. So you see. Why? Because we took more, a larger number of random couples. So we must have a better approximation now. Okay, so this concludes practicum two. And thank you for your attention and see you next time.